another episode of A Feminine Moment. I am Cherry Lynn, and I am here with Dixie Amblin Forsyth. Hi, Dixie. Hi, Cherry. Dixie is the author of Fascinating Womanhood for the Timeless Woman, now an international Amazon bestseller, and Dixie is also the daughter of Helen B. Andelin, who wrote the original book, Fascinating Womanhood. Right. We are excited to talk to, talk to you today about feminine mannerism. What does that mean? It's the way that women naturally are built to move and act. It's actually another thing that's fairly simple to do, but because of the world we live in today, a lot of women don't know anything about it. And it's, it's really sad because, again, this is one of your core strengths, ladies. Why is it important for us to be feminine in the way we move and the way we act? Because we have more influence that way. We, it, whenever you play to your strength, uh, no matter what, when you're playing to your strengths, you always have more influence you're more successful than what you're doing. And we're not talking about manipulation. We're talking about influence. And also the way you feel. Even if you're completely alone in your house for an entire week, when you are feminine in the way you move, the way you walk, the way you move your hands, you're going to feel better about yourself, even if you're all by yourself. What are some of those mannerisms? Walking, I would imagine, is one. Have you ever seen anyone who kind of who looked otherwise very feminine, very girly, but they kind of move like a locomotive or uh. <laughs> okay. okay. And or they just it's like very large steps. Certain uh, shoes. I remember in the nineties, I think um, those big clunky shoes were really popular, kind of Frankenstein shoes. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. Okay, some women can get away with that and be absolutely adorable wearing them, but a lot of us kind of clunk in them. You have to be very girly to get away with those. So the way you move, the way you sit. So women imitating men by sitting with their legs apart, not only is not physically necessary, it's not attractive, and it's not feminine, and it's definitely not charming. Okay, so there's that, the way we walk, the way we sit. Have you ever seen how some women sit when they'll they'll just kind of drop into their chair like, they're sort of falling into it, clunk, you know. And then they're yeah. sitting. Not yeah. attractive. Definitely not charming. When you sit in a chair, it should be kind of a fluid motion. Pretend you're a princess. There's ways to cross your legs or not cross your legs. Or uh, I remember my mother teaching me how to get in and out of a car gracefully. Because mm -hmm. have you ever seen a tabloid with a celebrity that got out of a car? <laughs> Even if you're not wearing a skirt, it's and, and nothing is showing. It's not attractive. I heard about, there was a, an old actress, Claudette Colbert, very famous actress, but she told the story of when she was younger and aspiring actress, she didn't like the way she walked. Every time she walked along the street, like in town, she'd look in the store windows and see her reflection of how she was walking. And she deliberately changed it to be what she wanted. Um, same thing with your hand movements. You can... <laughs> You, it's the way you move your hands. In my book, I talked about how when Bob was a little boy, he said there was a lady and at church in Sunday school, and she would lead the singing. And he mm -hmm. said the way she led the singing was mesmerizing to him because she was so... He said he just stared. And if you've ever seen hula dancers, mm -hmm. the way they... It's so graceful. The way you move your hands can, um, can be fascinating and mesmerizing. And these are all things we can work on, the way you move, the way you sit, the way you shake hands and with anybody. You don't want to shake hands like you're going to bring your victim to, the, to his knees, nor do you want to shake hands like you're barely alive, the whole the dead fish handshake. The, the feminine mannerisms are fun to me. They're very fun that we can work on. And I think, personal opinion, I think one of the reasons that we look good in and we like the way we feel in heels, even though they're painfully discomfortable, uncomfortable, many times, is because of the way we walk in them. It feels very feminine. And uh, that's one of the reasons men like it. It makes our legs look longer. And What about facial expressions? 
Is that part of what we're talking oh, about? Oh, I'm so glad you brought that up. If you've ever looked at yourself in the mirror, oh my gosh, and <laughs> seeing the way you look sometimes, you just kind of like, oh. <laughs> and um, some of us are great at poker face. I'm not. I've, I've never been. My mother used to uh, get after me. She said when I liked a boy, it was showing all over the place. I, I've never been great at acting. But I can still learn to not show um, disgust. <laughs> or <laughs> when I don't want to. I do the eyebrow thing, Bob, this thing. Or when I like think I, someone says something I think is kind of weird, I kind of go. <laughs> when I don't, I'm not aware of it. It may have been Marilyn Monroe that said, your greatest makeup is a smile. The, the best smile is what's called a Duchenne smile, which is basically a, a natural smile. Where when you, when someone orders you to smile and you do, it uses different muscles in your face than if it's genuine. <laughs> yeah, a genuine smile goes up into your eyes. It, yeah. it even includes your eyes, and people can tell it's genuine by your eyes and not by your mouth. There's also different styles of how to cross your legs. Quick, jerky movements are not as uh, feminine as fluid ones. You can learn to, if you don't naturally ad have adopted this already, to do things in more of a fluid manner. Like, I know it's exaggerated, but like a hula dancer, the way they move their hands is very fluid. And you learn to do it. I, I bring that up because I, I went to school in Hawaii and I loved hula dancing and that sort of thing. But watching the real experts do it is mesmerizing. And some people naturally do it. Uh, it's, it's another one of your, like I said, your core strengths. If your natural way of moving right now is a little bit, you're realizing, you're watching this and you're saying, oh, I'm not, I don't think I'm that feminine with my mannerisms. I want to work on this. How do you start to work on it and feel natural? Because we don't want to feel like we're in a pageant and performing. I mean, if you want to be a better cook, you cook more. You get more into recipes. If you want to be better at the piano, you practice. Anything that you do that you practice, you'll get, you'll get better at. It isn't like you're having to do something that's completely unnatural. In other words, you may be born with a talent for public speaking, but if you never do it, you'll never develop it. These are more of the fun things to do. Also, we didn't talk about it, but laughing. <laughs> You know what I'm talking about? Really loud, the loudest person in the room, and really kind of grating, kind of shrill. And uh, doesn't mean you can't laugh from your belly, but don't, my mother say, don't roar. Won't roar. <laughs> <laughs> don't throw your head back and roar. And, I, and I, I thought, yeah, I get it. I get what that what means. What about eating? Eating, chewing with your mouth open, obviously burping and things like that. Taking giant bites of things. <laughs> These are all so simple, but they're, it's kind of a dying... For any of us who are interested in or need to watch our weight, when you take smaller bites and chew them, you actually don't eat as much. Manners aren't really taught, are they? Are well, they, they used to be. This is, what, <laughs> this is one of the things that happened with some of these... Uh, extreme feminist. When I was growing up in California, there were charm schools around. There are no, I never, I never hear about charm schools. We were taught in school and in church about how etiquette at a table, how to uh, fold, fold napkins, placing your napkin on your lap. I don't hear about that anymore. What happened to charm schools? They're wonderful. It's kind of up to us as women and as mothers to keep that alive, it sounds like. Ladies, it feels good to be this way to be a woman because it's who you are. And the more female that you are, the more you, you emphasize the differences between you and the men in your life, the better. Another thing that some women have brought up is um, that you shouldn't, they say you shouldn't be feminine or act feminine when you're in a potentially dangerous situation, like you're walking alone at night somewhere, or to which I would say, I don't, I'm not sure that behaving masculine is going to deter somebody from uh, attacking you if that's what's on their mind. It makes us look weird.
if we try to act masculine, it doesn't really fool them into thinking that we're like them and tough and masculine. In fact, uh, they might be challenged by it. But more than anything, I'd say if you know you're in a dangerous situation, number one, you should try to not put yourself in those dangerous situations because they really are dangerous. I've seen shows on television to realize why do so many women put themselves in these situations? Is it because we're taught today's world that women have to be tough? When I was working um, at a store uh, for several years, I didn't have a choice. When I left work at night and I closed the store down, I had to walk to my car. In the right. House. And I remember feeling a little nervous because there were, it was an area where you sometimes saw a few questionable individuals walking around. So I never thought of changing the way that I walk when I went to my car. I just, and I, and I'm not saying I'm the perfect example by any means, but I know in answering to what you're saying about well, why are you in those situations? Sometimes you are in those situations because, because you must. You okay. must. And so if that's the case, you know, for me, I never considered I need to be strong right now and huff to my car. You know, I just never thought about it that way. I mm -hmm. thought of it as more of I need to be very aware and I need to look confident. And I think you can be absolutely feminine and confident and watch out for yourself and not sacrifice who femininity. You are. Femininity has nothing to do with low self-esteem or not feeling confident. That's a misunderstanding. Now, you should be confident but not masculine. And if you're in a situation like you talked about where you have to walk to a car, you live in a big city alone at night after dark, I would concentrate more on, like you say, being aware, being safe, maybe having pepper spray rather than on your walk. I don't think that's going to deter anybody. I, I really don't. I, think, I don't think that's going to make you safer. Maybe it makes you feel safer, but I think that's an illusion. And try to park under where it's lit so there's lights around if you can. Yeah. Another thing that we did too at the store that I worked at, because I was the manager, I just made a, a rule where when we all left, we left together and we walked out together. And I think there's things that you can do. Maybe not every situation out there, you, you have those options. But if you can think smart about these things, instead of, I, like you said, I don't see how huffing to your car in a more masculine manner is going to protect I really have never, ever seen or heard of anyone that was actually safer by acting more manly. Don't take the attitude of, I'm fine, I can take care of myself. Because most men are, like we've talked about before, 75% greater upper body strength than us. Even if we're fit and we go to the gym, we just really shouldn't put ourselves in those situations unless we absolutely have to. What do you think about the women that take self-defense classes? Right. 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 No, I think that's it. Thank you for answering that because I know that's something that has been brought up in the past when we've talked about being feminine and walking feminine. What we're saying is femininity is one of your core strengths. Femininity is one of your core strengths. It's how we can be the best we can be. And so anytime we abandon that for something masculine, we're not men. We're not going to do it as well as doing it from a female perspective and point of view. And this teaches you how to get the most out of your life, how to feel the best about yourself and be able to feel beautiful. Because like as Van Gogh had said, oh, there's no such thing as an ugly woman because women are naturally beautiful when they're feminine. Thank you so much for all of your advice. This is so helpful. And I hope everyone out there watching finds this helpful and inspiring. Don't forget to like, comment, share our videos and subscribe. And I guess that's it. We'll see you next time. Thank you. Bye. Bye. See you next time.